<sighs> Hello. This is S-Log footage. This is graded S-Log footage. Here's how you do it. What is up, everyone? Hope you guys are doing well. I know I am. Actually, that's a lie. I could be doing better. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Mm. Ah, much better. So today we're gonna talk about how to grade S-log footage without using any LUTs. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the scientifics of how S-log footage works. It has something to do with a specific gamma curve that I don't know too much about. Essentially, all you need to know is that flat profiles like S-log 2 or S-log 3 increases the dynamic range of your camera so that you have more room to play with when color grading in post. Now, a lot of filmmakers like to add LUTs to the S-log footage, which emulates a specific time of film stock, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to grade S-log footage without using any LUTs. By the way, I'm not a professional colorist at all. I'm sure there's a far more accurate and in-depth way of how to properly grade S-log footage, but I like doing it this way because for one, it's easy and it works for me. Also, I'm not a professional gymnast. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's get started. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, in Premiere Pro, we're gonna open up Lumetri. Now there's a couple ways to do that. You can go to effects, uh, type in Lumetri color and just drag that guy over to the clip and you'll see it right over there. But I personally like using the workspace uh, that Premiere uh, has laid out. And you can do that by going to Windows, Workspaces, and you can go to Color. So um, before we begin, um, I want you to pay attention to this guy over here. This is the RGB Parade. That's your red, greens, and blues. That's a whole video in itself. I don't wanna get into that. Um, it's caused a lot of marital problems, so I just, I just don't want to talk about it. So what we have here is a clip filmed in S-Log3. It was overexposed by two stops because uh, that's how you're supposed to properly expose for S-Log3. I also filmed the same shot um, with no picture profiles and this is what it looks like right here. So it has the saturation, it has the contrast. Um, but if you take a notice over here, uh, it just it looks like it's clipping in the highlights and I could probably lower it down and balance it out But clearly there's a big difference between this footage with no picture profile Versus this footage that is completely flat and you're probably thinking how in the world am I supposed to put some color into that dude? Seriously, I'm going to unsubscribe from you right now. You can deal with your own marital problems first of all uh, chill out and second Flat profiles have the ability to be stretched. So if you take a look at the RGB parade over here, what we wanna do is actually stretch the shadows all the way down close to zero. We don't wanna go past zero because that's where the um, uh, black levels are at its uh, darkest and we do not wanna go past that. It just looks weird and muddy. And we wanna be able to push our highlights um, no more than 100. I actually like keeping it around 90. I found it to be the safest and it looks, it keeps the, it keeps the highlights like shadows and clouds pretty soft and, and pretty natural looking. So um, here's how we do that. So in the Lumetri panel, we're gonna to go to the color wheels. We're gonna start there. And here you have shadows, midtones, and highlights. So the first thing I like to do is I like to lower the shadows as much as I can. So go ahead and pay attention to the RGB parade as well as the clip as I lower down the shadows. Okay, all right, cool, great. And we're done. Well, thanks guys for watching and, uh, oh, actually, we're not done. Sorry about that. So once we've lowered our shadows just a bit, we're gonna lower our midtones as well. Probably just about here, we're getting there guys. We're just stretching and pulling. So our product there. Maybe the shadow is a little bit more. And again, we do not want to go past zero. We do not want any of this stuff touching zero at all. So here we go. We got that there. And then what we're going to do is push the highlights up. Oops. Let's see. Product right over there. Looks pretty good to me. Look at that. Cool, so we're probably gonna adjust that again, but now we're gonna go to basic correction. We're going to go to the shadows and we're going to just lower it. 
It's about there. Also paying attention to where your RGB parade is. And uh, if it looks like it's touching the zero marker, just go back to color wheels and just adjust the shadows just so that it does not touch the zero. Probably like around there. Okay, awesome. So right after that, let's just uh, let's just go and adjust the saturation and increase it. And here, basically, what I'm doing is that I'm just kind of going through all the adjustments and just kind of looking at the clip as well as the RGB parade and just kind of get a good balance of the whole thing. And so it's going to take a, a little bit to adjust. And the idea is to just keep going back and forth with the basic correction and the color wheels. So I'm looking over here. I could probably push uh, my midtones actually a little bit higher so that it reaches uh, 90. I also like decreasing the contrast to, to give it a more filmic look. But when I do that, I also like to adjust the shadows so that it gives a more natural and softer contrast look to it. Let's increase the saturation. Now let's go to the other clip with no picture profile. So here, has a bunch of contrast. It's definitely way overexposed over here in the highlights versus the S-Log uh, footage here, which gives a softer fall off, looks a little more natural, which is why a lot of people like to film an S-Log. And the clip with the no picture profile looks a little too video-y uh, for some reason, where the S-Log 3 footage looks really soft and looks, looks really cinematic and very clean. So you can stop there, but I like to take it a step further and improve the image a little bit more. And to do that, just go to Curves. And here, uh, basically what I want to do is that I want to create a slight S-curve. And to do that, just uh, select a point right over here, lower it down just a little bit, and then select a point right here and raise it up just a bit. And you'll see that it creates a slight S, but also you'll notice in the clip that it's uh, a, a little more contrasty, uh, which, is, which is good, which is what I'm going for. And all this is up to you. So if you want a little more contrasty, you can go lower. If you want more of a softer look, then you know, kind of keep it neutral. But really, this is where you want to get to when you're grading S-Log footage is to make it look as natural as possible. And then from there, you can add more style to it um, by making it warmer or colder or more contrastier or whatever you want. And again, to compare it from before to now, much better. And that's it. Well, hopefully that was helpful to you. Now, if you don't want to go through this process every single time you have to color grade S-Log footage, not to worry. I made a LUT just for you. In fact, I made two. One LUT for outdoor S-Log footage and another LUT for indoor S-Log footage. So make sure to check them out in the links below. And if you're new to this channel, then subscribe and join this awesome community of storytellers helping each other out. Seriously, the whole purpose of this channel is to help you guys become better storytellers than me. That is my passion and I just want to spread the love. Anyway, if you got questions about filmmaking or camera gear, then let me know in the comments below. Now grab your camera, get out there, and tell some great stories. See ya!